Hey guys. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, I want to uh, thank you guys for showing up. We showed up for the Twitch stream yesterday, in which we were working on the fair. Uh, uh, I'm working on my Mando helmet. This is what these are. These are uh, uh, Universal Greeblies um, that I 3D printed last night while I was sleeping. God, I love my 3D printers. Um, the 3D printers I, I have in question are so quiet, I can literally sleep. Um, the one that's going off right now is my 10 inch uh, industrial one. Um, and so she's a little bit louder than, the, than, than my 6 inch. But uh, my 6 inch uh, printer just finished um, the startings of uh, one of my weapons for my, for my Mando. Uh, this is a universal uh, uh, helmet mount thing. Yes, I broke it. There's a reason why. Uh, mostly because I, I don't care. This is just a test print uh, to see if it will uh, look right or look good uh, on my helmet. Plus, you know, it's Star Wars. It's a, it, having things broken is the norm. Okay, these are more universal greeblies. Uh, again, if you are a Star Wars fan, you will know what a Universal Greebly is. Uh, if you're not a Star Wars fan, allow me to educate you. A Universal Greebly was first used on things like uh, X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Star Destroyers, things of that nature. It's designed to bring some more detail uh, to your eye that you didn't notice before. Okay? Should be fine. One, two, three, and it's fine. Okay. So what I mean by that, now bear in mind this is just resin. This uh, resin, this is uh, rubbing up. Now uh, you should be doing this with gloves. So full disclosure, do it with gloves. I, however, am not allergic to the resin that I use or the uh, rubbing alcohol. I'm actually quite lucky. Uh, some people are really badly allergic, so you should always, always gloves unfortunately I didn't because I just this video is impromptu I wasn't even planning on making this video uh, I did release a video uh, earlier today that was quite a long one um, and it was me working on some models uh, on my uh, bench so you guys had at least something and so here is the helmet in question let me just move me right down here. Um, this is, uh, of course, the uh, uh, this is Boba Fett's helmet, with the exception of the fact that I filled in the dent up here, which is required. It's mandatory. You must fill in the hot in the dent uh, if you want to join the Mandalorian Mercs. Uh, either any chapter, both American, any any world chapter. How I live in England, so. It is mandatory that you fill in the hole. Another thing that is mandatory when it comes to the FET helmet um, is that you you have to go way out of your way to customize it to make it not look like it belonged to Boba Fett at all or Django. Um, my bounty hunter's name is Vonkar Krill. Um, I've had this, again, I've talked about this in previous streams. I've had Vonkar for 20 plus years. Idiots. It's it's a Saturday, so all the wannabe freaking petrol heads are out in force. Anyway, uh, so this uh, uh, Vonkar Krill is a half Mando, half Chisk. If you don't know what that is, uh, Mandos look just like humans, only they just they, they are slightly stronger physically than a regular human. Uh, and a Chisk is uh, Tarkin, no Tarkin, um, Thrawn. Thrawn is a Chisk. So I think blue skin, red eyes. Okay. Uh, my mother was a Chisk. My father was a Mando. Um, hence that's why I've got the Mando name. Um, character wise, all my character has that, that shows that he's part Chisk. Is he has red eyes? That's it. Um, that and he understands the Chisk, Chisk language, um, and yeah, that's the only perks that he got from having a Chisk mother. 
Uh, he's, ha he's hated by both, which means he that makes him an outcast. So he's not a super, super fan of, like, Mandalore or other Mandalorians, so he's an outcast as is. But uh, also, uh, the, the Krell family uh, are from from Mandalorian society. The Krell family were part of the the Honor Guard, and uh, of course, when my dad hooked up with the Chisk ambassador, that's basically what happened um, for his for his punishment. He was uh, sent on a Death platoon. Same fucking dickhead. He's doing laps. Anyway, uh, there's some uncured resin on this piece, so I figured I'd cure it. Anyway, so I'm going with a. I want to say Samoan, but it is a, a tribal theme. And so, uh, my signet is going to be a shark. And everyone's like, shark? Yeah, a shark. My signet is going to be a shark. Everyone's like, you're using a toothbrush? Yeah, I'm using a toothbrush. If you've got parts like this that that you need to get in there and get clean, trust me, toothbrush is the way. Uh, now, apparently, my resin set uh, 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 printer didn't account for the height differentiate in this part, so part of the antennas got merged with the base, and that's fine. It happens. I ain't even mad. In fact, that makes it more Star Warsy if you think about it. Because again, you want you want differentiation. Now, um, to those who are Star Wars fans, they're going to recognise um, where this you, this this comes from. Um, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you're probably thinking, "I do not know where this comes from." So I will educate you. This is part of. <laughs> Uh, this is part of the helmet to a very, very, very influential Imperial um, who happens to be one of my favorite uh, field admirals. Uh, so that should tell you something. Uh, this is <laughs> this is General Veers. This is on the side of General Veers' helmet. Uh, this is his rangefinder uh, for General Veers. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna take a because it's already got a pre hole in it. I'm gonna take a bit of brass rod. This is solid. This isn't hollow. This is solid. I could have I, I, I could have hollowed it, but no point. Um, so I'll drill it. Uh, put a little brass rod in there to uh, ensure that it stays attached. Uh, again, these are. Uh, uh, These are Thrawns, not Thrawns, sorry, uh, these are, um, these are part of his helmet as well, and uh, so yeah, so that's those, uh, don't worry about the little sprue bits, they'll, they'll just go in the recycler, um, and yeah, so I was thinking about adding those, or adding this, so maybe back here well because on on Thrawn's helmet it's on the side it's actually like on the side here and so these clips these sides actually hold the helmet part the helmet together so and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with this rangefinder so what I might do is modify the rangefinder a little bit and add this to it. Yeah, that was Star Wars it a little bit. That would definitely Star Wars this. If I put it on there. So 
I could re I could print another one of these and hollow that sucker out and um, put a little coin cell in there with a little flashing LED you know I wouldn't no, I wouldn't want to put it on the metal face plate because that wouldn't Huh, actually that's not bad. Let's see? Putting it down there, that's actually not bad. Huh. That's not bad at all. That's growing on me. I like that, that's growing on me. But I know if I do that, it won't make me part. See, there's certain parts you you can't add to a Mando Merck's helmet. Like along here, uh, Boba Fett has uh, some language. I'm going to put shark teeth, like Samoan style shark teeth, down the side. And I was going to go with the old school, like nose art shark teeth motif down here, either side. You know? So that might look good. So what am I going to do with the... Actually, I can put these on the back. Back here, like what's actually on... Tarkin's helmet. I'd have to set... I'd have to, like, mark them out and space them. Hmm. So we got lots of decisions to make, guys. Uh, so you now stick by. If this is for you, then please hang out. Uh, you are more than welcome to hang out over at twitch.tv slash deceptive cobras. We will be I will be going live again today. Uh, not not uh, I'll be going live at about 7 p.m. UK time. So it'll be a little bit later than I normally do. Uh, we did tint the visor. Uh, the, the visor doesn't come tinted. Uh, and normally it comes with clear plexus, so we got some uh, automotive window tint and we tinted it. Uh, it was my first tinting job since almost another 10 plus years since I tinted anything. Um, so it's not the best, but it's enough to get me going and moving on with the, with the build. The idea is not to get it perfect, it's just to get it done. Um, and so what I'm going to do is sort this out so that people don't instantly say oh boba fett you know what i mean i'm going to customize this like this i'm not sure if i want to keep the the the, the, the target range target finder thing um give me a second i'm going to try and figure a way of zooming out for you guys uh huh you know what? Here, let me let me try something That's lowered the frame rate like ridiculously. No, 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 it's not working. That's not working. Let's revert that back. That's not working. There we go. That does not work. Uh, okay, so that does not work. Uh, I know that there's some software I've got installed in here. In one second. You can never find it whenever you need it. You always find it whenever you don't want it. Uh, come on, Logitech, where are there? There's Logitech, Logitech Capture. This has like a separate camera control uh, um, software to it. And that uh, Airbrush 101 video has still got 70 minutes to be uploaded. I'm literally uploading it as I'm recording to you, for you guys. Thank you, Logitech. Oh, it's, wow. It's already at max zoom, apparently. I can zoom in. I want to zoom out. Oh. Wow. Oh. won't let me zoom out. Well, that sucks. Uh, so, I guess I will just do this then. Well, anyway, um, so, 
the rangefinder is not necessarily unique just to Boba Fett, um, but you do have to find a way of modifying it. And so I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut it down and just leave it as an antenna or swap it out for this. Um, that's what I might do actually. Let me just... Now bear in mind, this is clipped in. And so you have to see, it uses clips to hold the sides of the helmet together. So you've got to be careful. Which means I would have to probably like two-part epoxy this side together. Which means this helmet's never coming apart again, which it shouldn't be anyway. Um, and then that way I can just, like... glue this rangefinder on yeah I think that works yeah that works I'll have to bust out my uh, Dremel and mark up where I've got a drill in for these and then that way I can sink it in a little bit further it's almost the perfect size too holy crap yeah it's like it's meant to be let me just get these little discs off the discs were parts so that you could you so it could be glued to, to uh, General Veers's helmet, but uh, of course I'm not playing General Veers, um, but I do have his armor, I have his helmet, I have the files for all of General Veers's stuff, including his um, drivers, which were just modified TIE Fighter pilot helmets. Um, and so what what I can do is, yeah. We could sink it right in. I would just have to modify. I'd have to sand it down a little bit and mark out where the clips are, and it will just sink right in. Then I can drill and tap uh, a brass rod. In fact, where is my. Where's my pin glass? Gotta clear out the drill the bit's teeth because I used it to unplug the super glue. Tough thing of super glue. There we go. You gotta just run through the runners. Sometimes you might have to do it from the front too. There we go. And then what I can do. And everyone's like, why aren't you using your electric one? Because you manually get it started. Because you don't want to use an electric one because it will just walk all over. Plus, look at this dust. See? Resin 3D printing produces dust. A lot of it. <laughs> and so there's that. And so now, I can... I'm such a geek. Everything's all. Even though this t desk looks like it's unorganized, it's actually quite organized for me. <laughs> for me. I like that for me part I just added right there. Yeah, for me. Uh, so gonna... Well, that was nice. Apparently, you weren't plugged in all the way. Alright. So, look at that. It's just a little simple, small. US, it's not even that loud, see? You can barely even hear it, so what I'm going to do is take you off. Uh, Chuck should be the, good, the right size for you. If not, I will. Right. No, it's not. I'm going to have to get the other Chuck. That's fine. Let me go get it. Oh. So unprofessional now. You're so unprofessional. Alright, here we are. Did someone say Chucks? I have about 50. I even have some titanium bits for when I'm going through metal, like steel bits and stuff. And that's mostly for when I'm modifying um, airsoft parts and stuff for friends, because like I said, that's what they, they treat me as, they treat me as their weapons smith. 
No joke, they legit treat me as their weaponsmith. They will come to me. It's like, uh, damn, yeah. Can you modify this for me? Of course I can. How much is it going to cost me? An arm and a leg. Alright. Next time a necromancer tells you something's going to cost you an arm and a leg, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Enough giggity. Take it out. So I need something a bit smaller than you. You're too small. You're too big. I really should etch. There we go. I really should etch uh, on the collops their sizes. Makes it so much easier to get the correct collop. Chuck collop, whatever you want to call it. Now you see it wobbling? No, it doesn't. So say you, you stop a bit from wobbling on you. You let the bit do the work, okay? Like I said, I've got to put a better torque motor in this thing. That's fine, I can swap it out for a newer bit. If this bit's not sharp enough. And it is sharp enough, it's just this poor thing is not meant for what I'm doing. Yeah, I was better off using my hand drill. There we go. Bed, uh, yeah, this poor little motor just doesn't have the, the torque. So I was thinking about swapping it out for a, a motor that has a little bit more torque. So when it comes to, to things like this, you don't want RPM. So that's the problem with a Dremel. Dremel's got too much RPM. Okay, and the reason why is because of cutting discs. With cutting discs, you need RPM. Um, with sanding heads, you don't. With polishing stones, you don't. Um, this is the problem with Dremel. Is Dremel re don't realise this, even though people are telling them we don't. So companies make these little knockoffs. See, if this was too fast, I wouldn't be able to do this with my finger. Okay. So. Spot the welder. <laughs> Comfortability is key when it comes to welding. If I'm going to sit in a position like this for 6 to 8 to 10 to 12 hours, and on what I'm welding, of course, uh, you better fucking believe I'm going to want to be comfortable. This is it on its max setting. See? There's no talk. There's no talk. None. And I can't use my Dremel like this because the Dremel one is too big, it's too hefty. I've got the snake for the Dremel, but again, there's no control with the snake. Like you can't set the RPM like I can on this thing. I just need to make the boat a little bit more talky. I'm not looking for RPMs, because you don't need RPMs. Think about it, okay? Let me put it in, in, into a concept, concept you can understand real quick. Okay. This, okay, it's the same bit, okay? So there's no shenanigans or anything like that. It's the same bit, all right? Only this time, I'm putting it in a hand drill, okay? My hand, okay? So my hand is gonna be the power. 
Okay. Now, do you really think I can spin this faster than that? No, of course not. But watch. I'm going slower, but because I'm putting torque into it, oh look, look at all that material I'm pulling up. See? That's the difference, Dremel, between speed and torque. Okay? So, what I plan on doing, see, look at that. Sometimes having an electric tool won't get you as far as using a manual. There's a reason why manual tools still are around. They still exist. They're still a thing when it comes to um, drills, things of that nature. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Okay? There'll always be a place for electric drills and, and, and power tools and whatnot. But there'll also all, forever always be a place for something like a um, hand drill or a pin vise or uh, whatever you want to call it. All right. So now I'm just going to cut that off. Nice. There we go. Just a little bit more. Not much. Just a little bit more. And you can glue these pieces together. And so, yeah, just showing you, you can do it. Okay? You can do it. Industrial strength super glue. This is the tip that constantly keeps, keeps getting clogged. Uh, so it's clogged again. Reason why is because it soil acrylate, aka super glue, activates when it's touched the moment it touches oxygen. So the fact that there's still some in the the, the, the nozzle and it's touching oxygen, it causes a skin. It causes a skin to form. Now, this is another little, little trick you can do. Take some, push it on the pin. for a few seconds. Thank you, General Viz. I can now say with certainty. See, now, if I really wanted to be cool, I could turn this into, uh, I've got the files, I can hollow this out, turn this into an enclosure, and set up a small little worm gear, and actually have this antenna spinning around. It's not hard convert files and have some fun and, and the reason why the super glue is not kicking off just yet is because one uh, they're still rubbing alcohol inside the, the, the tube there there's nothing I can do about that and two there we go yeah see it's kicking off now there we go yeah it's kicking off now So the pins in, which is what I wanted. Now we're going to put a little bit of glue. Not much. Around the opening. That's it. Done. straighten that out. There you go. And 
And there is our range finder for our I'm going to do is overlay this so I can get a rough idea of where I need to start tapping. Give me my sharpie. Again, this is not to hold the helmet. This is to ensure that this sits flush to the helmet. There we go. So this is to ensure that it sits flush to the helmet. Now, we could uh, use various different tips. Hence, this is what this is for. Not a wire brush. Not a uh, I could use. I'll use you once I'm in. Before I get in, I'm going to. What I'm doing now is I'm just marking out the center. Again, yes, using a hand drill, not my electric one. See, look, see, everyone keeps saying hand drills are nothing. See, it's working, it's working just fine. Okay, it's working just fine. Now, please, 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 people, do as I say, not as I do. Wear a mask, wear protective breathing apparatus. Especially when dealing with the uh, 3D resin, okay? 3D uh, 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 resin because the dust right here, the silica dust, once it gets in your lungs, you're fucked. All right. Uh, my lungs are already fucked, not because I smoked or anything, because they just, they just are. Um. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this is what's known as a side cutting bit, which means once it goes in. Uh, CNC machines use them all the time to strip down internal to hollow out an internalized component and so I'm basically just making a hole large enough that I can get it in and then just move it side to side and then adjust it as needed so yeah you're the plus I want to swap out the chuck so much do, do, do. So I'm going to be one of the big boys for you too. Now another thing, how you can tell if the bit is good or not is the size of the chuck that's needed. Uh, the bigger the chuck, um, the more, um, I wouldn't say the more torque, but the more, the more speed is designed to be sped at. Um, but again, if you look, you're always it's going to it's always going to taper down. And then you'll get to the actual head itself. Problem is that's where they snap nine times out of ten is at the tapered down part. Because Dremel don't listen. And this is another thing. Um, another thing you can do um, to ensure that your bits don't spin inside your Dremel is to null the bits that go inside the chuck. If it's nulled, the chuck's got more to bite. Again, something Dremel could do, but no, knurling costs money. Yeah, an extra, what, what, five cents? You already charge, what, 30 bucks for two bits? And so, like I said, this is just to make the hole bigger. That's what she said.
and again, you know, if need be, again, you can tell I'm not up. I used to weld. I'm just going to work it. And this would be so much easier if this model was hollow, but it's not. This is a solid infill model. Now people are like, well, why would it be easier if it was hollow? Because this would just be a, like a plastic cover. I'd just be able to drill through and then I'm done. But where this is this is solid, you know, where, where this is a solid block of resin, I'm having to go through a good centimetre as well if this was just hollowed with an infill it's a ladder mesh for those, mesh for those who don't know what, what infill means um, I would be able to just crack the skin and cut the thing to shape in a matter of seconds but where I made this I wouldn't say I was in a rush but where I wanted to just get this, and this is just a test, a proof of concept, okay? The fact that I'm already adding it to my, my helmet means I'm happy with it, it's just, and I do not have time to print an extra one, so watch. See how quick it's getting through. Now where we drilled. Bear in mind it is a hot one here in the UK today again. And I do have two fans and two windows open. I might have to take a break here soon because I don't want to overheat my computer or my... Uh, my device and my drill here. So like I said, this is because it doesn't have the, the torque. It's not about speed, because watch. See it stopped dead? Starts again. If this had torque, it would continue to rotate at a slower speed, still with some oomph behind it. See something like this, you just gotta find that perfect balance between torque and letting the bit do its job. Now the bit's walking on me. You see that? That's because the chuck just came loose. Now, like I said, this is why you've got to be careful. And you should, these should have a slip ring on them. And what a slip ring is, is if you don't know what a, a C-clip or a slip ring is, you really need to go back to automotive school. Uh, but where these were built to a specific price point, Collocks still good, it hasn't walked. And that's just not nothing. Because these collocks are made of brass, they do retain a lot of heat. And what happens when something gets heat soaked, people, it expands and contracts. Okay? So, and with the UK, like I said, having a bit of a heat wave, even minor brass items like this will have a higher maintained room temperature. And like I said, I do actually have a regular Dremel. And I might just have to break it out. Not that I want to, but I might have to. <sighs> just to get this done. But, you guys want to know what I'm doing? I'm doing this. Uh, to get my cosplay ready uh, as well as other things the reason why is because I this is going to be a long-term project for me so am I turning my channel into a cosplay channel no I am not Jessica Negri uh, I don't think I'll ever be as you know amazingly cool as Jessica Negri yeah the vibrations cause the super glue to let go that's fine um, and so what I want to do is, 
I like doing stuff for other people. I like doing a lot of stuff for charities, as you guys know, with my charity streams. And so, so there's a bit of dirt on my armor, it's driving me nuts. Um, so I like to do a lot of stuff for charity streams. And so I was thinking about getting my Mando costume together. Um, and then that way I can contact, like, I don't know, guide dogs, things of that nature, get one of their charity ID badges, legitimately, of course. And then, you know, who doesn't want to get their picture taken with a, a, a bounty hunter, you know, and put some money in a bucket and help help a good cause. So, you know, that's the goal. Plus, I'll be able to join up with some of the other Mando Mercs and we'll be able to go to St. Orm, you know, go to a couple of children's hospitals, cheer up the kids, you know, things of that nature. And uh, ho hopefully it will help me get over my, um, some of my mental health issues. Um, I, I, some of you may or may not know um, I suffer from a myriad of problems um, and I'm just gonna do this for a second um, I suffer from a myriad of problems uh, off like, 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 like in real life I am nowhere like the person I am on SL, uh, on, SL, on uh, uh, Twitch or anything like that. It has nothing to do with the fact that um, I'm not funny or anything like that. It has to do with the fact that I struggle with physical large groups. Um, I have some mental health problems. Uh, I suffer from split personality disorder, I suffer from PTSD, and I suffer from ADHD. Um, so, it is what it is, um, which is why I'm a perfectionist and I have to get something done. When I start a project, and I know I can take my time with it, something in my head is like, no, get it done, 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 get it done. And there's nothing I can do to turn it off. I am on a myriad of medication. Um, this is why my uh, Twitch schedules are um, sorry. Why my Twitch uh, schedules are all over the place. It's why my YouTube uploads are all over the place. I have an Alexa over there that reminds me every day to do basic daily things because my memory is failing me. Um, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's are two conditions that run in my family. My great grandfather had it. Uh, my grandfather had it. My my grandmother, who recently passed away, she had he uh, mental health, uh, healthy mental health issues, um, and so I'm worried that it might be onset uh, uh, Alzheimer's. And so I'm waiting to hear back from doctors about that and a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, no more sad cobra or happy cobra. <laughs> and so. Uh, this is why I'm trying to put up as much content as I can um, Which is why like I said, I, I would really love to have an editor help me because I have got A lot of content. I mean like I said, I just finished uploading a video um, Not even joking. It's just gone up and it's 58 minutes long um, and it, it is a long one. It is a long video. So I'm going to let that play. With the audio down. I'm going to let it play. Um, it, it, it is a long video. It is a... a for me anyway. Uh, I do plan on doing some longer format videos. Because some people have said to me. in, in, in That they enjoy falling asleep. Uh, listening to my voice. Uh, various other things. Uh, I am also in the process of getting back into doing a little bit of voice acting. Um, I I'm now an independent voice actor. Uh, I no longer I'm no longer part of the voice actors guild. Things of that nature. I I get contracts from a website called Gravy for the Brain, as well as Mandy's. Uh, uh, Mandy's is a independent artist contract a website where say you're looking for a voice actor with a specific set of skills. Um, 
and you would throw out the contract and we would throw in our bids basically is what it is the voice actors put in bids and try and outbid each other so yeah and I know my time is money um, so I don't lowball at all and some people immediately just say no because of how much I, I want to charge uh, full disclosure um, the minimum I will charge someone for a voiceover project regardless of, 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 of if it's episodic um, we can sort out a different contract but if it's a one-off thing I charge a minimum of 500 up to a thousand pounds um, it, again like I said my time is money I have professional grade microphones I have professional grade uh, stuff I have access to a soundproof booth I like I said I have a myriad of, of character voices and stuff that I can do as you guys know um, so yeah but uh, if it's like something like you want like Stewie to wish someone happy birthday I'll charge you like maybe 20 quid you know, it's something smaller like that. But if, it, if it's for a commercial thing like an audiobook or an episodic thing for a cartoon or a, a manga or an anime or something like that, um, then I will we'll, we'll, we'll work out a base rate, which means, um, case in point, say say um, Seamus from, from, from Freedom Tunes contacted me and said, uh, we I, I need you to do this voice for this character. And I'll be like, okay, how many episodes? And he says, uh, we'll do it as a one-off trial. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll give him a one-off trial rate. If he likes it and the, and the video does well and he gets the views and everything else and whatnot, he comes back to me and he's like, character's great. I want you to, to do some more. I'll be like, okay, then we can start negotiating a different rate because that was my intro rate. Every voice actor gives an intro rate uh, so that, that people can do screen tests, play tests, things of that nature and whatnot. So some, some of them will do it for free um and that way you it doesn't case in point if it's a passion project like like say um there used to be a guy on youtube uh i used to like watching uh, called star wars theory can't stand the guy now he's everything's gone to his head seriously uh, i just can't stand the guy um but uh when he initially said he was going to be doing a fan-based star wars project and that he was looking for people to do voiceover work and, and stand-ins and extras and whatnot. Uh, a lot of voice actors uh, sent him pro bono rate stuff, which means they weren't charging him anything up front. But if the video made X amount of views or did X amount of money, um, there would be there would, like, certain royalties. You know, They'd either get royalty or they would get a minimum of like uh, clicks per minute, things like CPM, things, just, just things, things of that nature. Uh, click through rate, CPM, watch hours. Uh, there, there's, it's a myriad. It is a minefield uh, contract. Contractably wise, it's a minefield to walk through by yourself. This is why a lot of voice actors go with an agency. But, but not to understand what they don't realize it's the agency that set the minefield in the first place, and will sell you the map to get through the minefield. Uh, I say fuck you. I'm not going through your minefield. Uh, so I don't need your map. I don't need you. I'm an independent voice actor, which is what I am. I'm an independent voice actor. So, if you guys want any work done, uh, you know how to get hold of me. You can get hold of me on Discord, or you can get hold of me at uh, deceptivecrobers at gmail.com. So, anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to end this video here. We'll just stay safe, have fun, keep sure it's fine, keep your enemies dying.